Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. In previous videos, you've seen me do relationships in Mongo in two different approaches. I've done uh, using object ID references, where you had this type called object ID in Mongoose that you can use to reference IDs in other collections and you can populate them. Um, you've also seen me do it where I just kind of manually create a relationship by putting a property that I query, like usually for like, um, things that belong to a user, I'll put a, just a username property on that schema and just query by the username. Since I typically have the username in my token payload when I create like a backend server. So there's one more approach to creating a, well, there's lots of different approaches to creating relationships in um, Mongo. So I'm gonna do one more, this is gonna be an embedded relationship. Actually, I'll, I'll probably do another video because I can think of one more using like a, like a junction table um, but what we're gonna do is create a new API. So let's just do this. Uh, let's create a new folder. Um, and the new folder goes like this. Okay, it's gonna, just gonna be uh, embed, we'll just call it embed rel. Okay, and then inside of here, let's open in there. We're just gonna do touch server.js schemas.js uh, db.js so I'm just going to do it all not, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of folders I'm just going to keep this simple um, that's fine okay then let's do an npm init dash y to create a blank package json we got that I'm going to want npm i express I want um, Nodamon, why not? And I want Mongoose. Is there anything else I kind of really need in the short run? No, I think I should be fine. Cool. So that's done. Okay, so let's start getting this all set up. So first I'll set up my database connection. Uh, out of laziness, I'm going to use my library, Mongo Rester. So actually, Mongo Rester, I have to install that. MPMI Mongo Rester. Okay, this is just a library of a bunch of utility functions for developing APIs with Mongo and Express. Um, I'm just going to use one function, so I'm actually going to even not even need this db.js thing here. I'm just going to go over here, start building out my server, so my dependencies. So first let's do const express equals require, ah, require express, and then const app equals express. And then what I want is I want to bring in, even before that, let's bring in const. I only want one function out of my library and that is conmon, meaning connection to Mongo, equals require um, Mongo rester. Okay, and this makes life a little bit easier because now I can just do my database connection in one line. And it has all the nice little messages and no, none of the deprecation warnings and all that good stuff. It's all kind of configured out of the box. Um, so DB connection. So I just do const mongoose equals, actually I can probably just do everything in this one file. So I won't even need my schema.js. We'll just do it all in one file. Okay. DB connection mongoose equals con mon. And then I have to pass in the URL. Okay. Um, default. See, I, I searched it so often that I <laughs> it knows. Actually, no, I want the yeah, I wanted this one. Control C. So I pass in the default URL for my local database. We'll just call this uh, embed rel. That'll be the name of the database. Cool. Okay, and just to show you that it works, I'm just quickly set up my listener. Uh, listener app dot listen. Actually, I will borrow one other function I have here, cblog. Okay, listen, 
3000. Okay, CB log. Server. Listening on port 3000. Oh, this CB log does is just return a console log or a function uh, that console logs something in a nice little colorful way. Listening on port 3000. Cool. So now if I run this node server.js. So I see I'm connected to Mongo and you see that I am listening on port 3000. Wonderful. Okay. I see it's like. 13 lines of code, how pretty is that? Cool. Now let's create our, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, there's people who own dogs and they may own more than one dog. So the idea behind with embedded relationships, you, you can create either one-to-one -one relationships or one-to-many relationships. Um, so we'll do both. We're gonna have, an, we're gonna have two schemas the one of address, so of a person's address, and then another one of a person's um, adding a dog, okay? And then we'll have owners that have addresses and they have dogs. Okay, so let's see here. So first we're gonna do our address schema. Okay, and then even before I do that, I wanna do const schema model just grab that out of the mongoose object okay while well, I just now that I have it okay so const address equals okay address equals a new schema and this new schema is gonna have a street that's a string, a state, that's a string, and a zip code, which will also treat as a string. Okay, and that'll be their address. And actually, I'll just call this zip. Okay, so there's that schema. Then we'll have a dog, const dog equals new schema okay const dog new schema what I want to do here is this every dog will have a name which is a string and an age which is a number good there's our dog we'll leave it at that and then we're gonna have owners. Okay, equals a new schema. And this is where we actually embed the documents. Cause it's not really like a separate document, but the idea is you're embedding the data within the doc, the existing document. So you're not putting it in a separate collection. You're just having one giant object. But by creating the other schemas, I've defined what the shape of those sub documents should be. So now I can just be like, hey, every owner has a name which is a string, okay, which, that um, eh, doesn't matter. I'm only gonna be doing one example. Uh, they're gonna have an address, which is of type address, so it has to match the address schema. Okay, oh, need a comma. Okay, and then they have, they may have dogs, which would be an array of dog okay now our d actual collection is going to be collections of owners and that information will have their address and dogs in their documents so in that case I'm only going to create one model so const and actually I should, so I should call this owner schema because I'm only really creating a model for owners okay so const owners or owner equals model equals um, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, do, uh, model equals owner owner schema 
Okay. So there we go. We have address. We have dog. We have owner. Cool. And now let's create some routes. Okay, routes. Okay, and here's what we'll do. We'll do app dot post. Here, what we'll do is we'll create a user. Okay, we'll call this slash create owner. Okay, rec async rec res. And I'm not going to be even bothered with the try catch block right now. Um, I'm basically all we're going to be doing here is that you're going to be passing in the information for an owner to create a new owner. Just really the name is the only thing that's required. And you're going to create a new owner. So it'll just basically be a res.json. And then we're going to await owner.create the rec.body. Okay, because it's just going to basically return you the created owner. Cool, so that one's pretty straightforward. Okay, then we're going to create a route to add an address. App.post. We'll call this slash add. Or we'll just call it address. And then we're going to have a param of the username. Or of the owner name. Okay. And then we do another async rec res okay and basically what this will do and let's actually test out what we got so far so let me just take a moment go over here let's add a quick script here start will be node server.js that's fine I'm not going to even use that anyways and then there'll be dev, which will be notamon server.js, which is what I will be using, because we'll, now I can just keep updating it without having to restart this over and over again. And uh, let's just do npm run dev. There we go. Now let me open up Postman. I need a terminal. Okay. Cool, so localhost 3000 create owner was the route body this should be all we really need as a name. So we'll say name Alex and that should be it. So let's see here, do we create a new owner? Oh, error, can I get create? Oh no, it's because it's a post. Hmm. I didn't get anything back. Why not? The post res.json async await dot create dot rec body res.json seemed like it did the thing. So let's do this. Control X. I guess I am gonna have to do the so we'll do const owner owner equals that and then we'll put re, then we'll res.json the owner but then I'm going to wrap this in a try catch block so try and then if something goes wrong I want to catch it error res.json error. I'm not going to really bother with status codes right now for the sake of timeliness. Okay. So let's try this again. Create a new owner. For this I'm going to call it Alex2. Hmm. What am I missing? So let's try this. Console console.log. 
Oh, I'm an idiot. I know what it is. Okay, I forgot. App.use express.json. I forgot the middleware that parses the JSON body. Okay, um, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, let's try this again. That means the first one never got created anyway, so I'm gonna go back to Alex. There we go, cool. So we see we have a, a person who's Alex, but he has no address and no dogs. Cool. So now let's create a route where we can add the address. That's gonna be this route right here. So again, we're gonna get the owner name. So we're gonna say const, actually I really wanna call this name. So actually I should probably call this name too. So I can destructure it. It's always nice to have things match. Let's check my schema. Yep, name. So const name equals rec.params. I'm destructuring uh, the name property from the request object. And then what I'm gonna do is then const owner equals await owner dot find name. So it's gonna find the owner with the same name. And then once we do that, we're gonna want to pass in the address you pass in. So it's gonna be owner dot address equals rec.body because you've passed in an address okay then we need whenever you make direct changes to an individual object from a query you have to save it so owner dot save because i'm not using like find by id and update i'm literally taking that object and pulling it out and editing it directly so the save function then saves the changes that i made to the database so I could use find by ID and update. That would also do the trick um, or find an update. I just chose to do it this way. Just because when I'm working with like embedded documents and a lot of relationships, this just for some reason feels more intuitive to me. Um, Owner.save and then we will just do res.json and we'll just send you the new updated owner. Okay, cool. Let's try to give our owner an address. So what's the route again? Adder name. So it's adder slash Alex. Okay, and then now I wanna pass in street. Hello street. 53 for hello street state say Ohio and then zip say 43404 I think that's like an Ohio zip code been a while um, okay so technically I'm gonna post this to, and that should do that and return us the updated object. Um, okay, so see it got hung up. So that means something. I forgot something. So let's take a look. Const name await owner dot find name. Yeah, I don't think it found an owner because I think it's because I've made Alex an uppercase. Um, so let me do this. Let me go back over here and I'll just use this one here. Create another owner. Because since I'm using a param, I think a param's always come in an uppercase regardless. Uh, create owner body name. Steve. Okay, so we created an owner called Steve. Let's try this again with Steve, all lowercase. Nope, it doesn't like that either. 
So let's examine my next gen. So my next thing is going to be figuring out where does it, where does it go wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a console dot count. Then I'm going to put a console dot count between every line. This helps me narrow down exactly where. And I know this is going to end up being something really silly. Um, it's saying save is not a function, but it should be. Assuming that I am grabbing the right owner. So let me also console log owner right after this. Let's see what I'm getting out of there. Save. And let's give that a shot. Okay, so that failed. Let's take a look at the, the log. So we got two. Okay, so it found the right person. So we got to one, two, three, four. So it is the owner.save that is messing up. Oh, here's why, because it's an array. Got it, I always make this mistake. Because what I want to do is I just want to find one. I only want to find that one object. I always do that. Okay, so that should do it. Save. I'll keep those for now until I know this is working. So let's try this again. Okay, there we go. So we see now Steve has had the address pushed into him. Okay. Um, cool. Now let me try Alex again. And let's see what happens if I try to add a property that's not in the schema. Okay. Oh, so well, I guess it still doesn't work for Alex because Alex because of the name. So let's do Stevo. Get another owner called Stevo. Let's change this to Stevo. Okay, it must be because it doesn't match the schema. Unexpected string adjacent position. Uh, oh, I didn't put a comma. Hoi. There we go, Stevo. And see, it doesn't add the wacky thing here because it matches has to match the schema. So that's the benefit of the schema. It helps you to make sure you don't add information you don't want to add. So that's the reason why it's nice to build schema for your sub documents because then you can define the shape of what's in the array. Instead of just saying, hey, it's an array of objects, you can actually say, okay, it's an array of specifically objects that look like this. Um, cool. Um, that's all fine and good. So now let's create an a route that adds a dog, but then we get rid of all these console that counts. Let's forget what's the keystroke here so I can actually select all of them. Uh, mm, nope. Well, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, and then we also don't need this console log anymore. Hit save. Cool. One more app.post. This time it'll be dog slash name because we want to grab the name of the owner. And then I'll just kind of copy this function because it's going to be very similar. Okay, except now we still want the owner, except now it's going to be a dog. We're adding a dog to an array of dogs. So instead of just saying that it equals that, I have to push the, ver the value in there. So I'm going to push rec push the rec dot body in there, then save and then return the owner and that would do it. Okay, save. So now if I wanna add an owner to that dog or a dog to that owner, go dog, Stevo. Then we have to match the scheme of dogs, which is gonna be name, Sparky. and age 35. Okay, I hit send. 
Hmm. Thought I'd do it again. Let's see here. Let me think about that name. Sparky. Age 35. That meets the schema. The, it's, that's the endpoint. Dog name. Name direct params. Owner. Find one. So that should only give me one. Owner. Oh, it's called dogs, isn't it? Dogs. Stop push. Cool. Okay. So let's do this again. There we go. And so now we see he has a dog named Sparky. And then I can go and see it has its own ID. In the same way the address has its own ID. Because it, since it's using a schema, it gets its own sub ID. So that way you can still track those sub documents. Um, and then I will... Um, and then you have to type in all the logic. If you, and that's the thing. When we want to edit the sub documents, that also makes it like all sorts of like extra tricky because then you have to go back and like get the owner then do a find in the array for the I object that has the right id then do all your transformations then save I'm, I'm not a big fan of this sub document approach for that reason and then the other reason why it's kind of troublesome is if i'm looking through the dogs if it's just the address and i'm just replacing the address it's a little bit easier to edit um and then the other downside is that like if i'm saving enough dogs in Stevo's dog array here you could hit the maximum document size which is like I think like a meg or two megs because so you're at the end of the day you're probably better off parsing that information into multiple collections um, so that way all your individual collections are smaller in size and you only populate them and then with the reference field one benefit of that is you can choose when to populate them so you don't you know if you don't need the information for a particular call you just don't run the populate on that field um, you know you don't have to get everything every time but you have the IDs there although all this gets even better improved with GraphQL but that's a different conversation um, so let's see here local host 3000 dog stevo memory let's make another dog called spot and see now I can just keep adding dogs named spot Okay. Yeah, and you can, there you go. So basically what you're doing is you're just building one giant document and you have IDs of all the sub documents, but there's just sort of one parent document. Um, now, as far as removing, I mean, again, the easiest thing you can do is you can just pull down the owner object, go through the array, get rid of the dog you want. And you can even just do it based on the index. So for example, if we get like, We'll call this, you know, abandon. You want to abandon one of your dogs. Okay, we'll give it an, in, you give it an index number. Okay, or index. So then I will destructure index. Oh, I still need the owner. So I still need the owner name. Okay. So we'll structure the name and the index from there. We still get the owner, but then what we'll do is you want to get rid of one of the dogs. You just do dogs.splice based on the index. Okay, and we're just going to get, we're going to remove one item. Save, and then we'll get the edited owner. Okay, so. I mean, so technically, if you're doing this in React, when you iterate over the list of dogs, theoretically, you could grab their index and kind of, you know, you can uh, use the index as a way to pass it back. So, so let's see here. So I want to say Stevo wants to abandon. So he has two dogs, Sparky and Spot. Let's say he wants to abandon Spot, who would be an index Spot one. So basically, when I do this, it should. Wait a second. I think I had another word before that. Abandon. So, abandon slash. So, Steve wants to abandon his second dog, Spot. So, when I do this, he should no longer have Spot. Okay, and see, now he only has Sparky. So, yeah, that's pretty much how that works. That's how embedded uh, objects work. There's probably more things in Mongoose you can do so you can grab them by the IDs. Although, I don't know if that's always the most convenient thing, depending on how your application set up. Um, but it's, it's one way to do it. 
And um, yeah, so I'll leave it at there. This is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Uh, join the Slack and Discord community over there at devnursery.com, and I will talk to you guys later.